Welcome to another episode of The Takedown with your host, me, Q Dube. I hope everybody is doing well in this 2021. I hope it's treating you better than 2020 did. Uh, and for you to ensure that that continues to happen, please make sure that you keep sanitizing, you keep masking up, you keep social distancing. And you understand what I'm saying? Corona is is real. It does kill. Hey, Corona is kill. It does real. Uh, but you get what I was trying to say continue steaming, doing what they need to do, drink your hot liquids, and let's just preserve life uh, and make sure we get past this hurdle, yeah? We've got a fire episode for you today, man. Episode three is going to be Munandi Sauce and everything in between. We've got a very, very, very intellectual gentleman, a very, uh, I don't know what you can say about this guy, man. A lot of people have opinions on him, uh, whether you agree with his politics or you don't, his views on things or you don't. One thing you can't not deny is the fact that he's one of the most brilliant political minds that we've ever experienced in our country, like especially in the last 20 years, I think. Yeah, he's he's that guy. And he's here with us today to have a little discussion and see if we can rile him up. We'll see if we can, you know, we can kind of get him to do the thing. But before we do that, let's get into a rundown of what has been happening in the country. Now, first of all, we all know of uh, the recent arrest of Fadzai Mahere as well as Hopewell Chinono and so on. And they're now uh, guests at, of the state. That's where they are. Currently, they were arrested for the video. You remember the video of the baby? The baby and the mom and, and the mom grabbing the police officer and the baby looked lifeless and people were saying that the baby died because the police officer was trying to hit the mom but missed and hit the baby's head and the baby died. Right. So that issue was later clarified, right? It was clarified. The police came out, put out a statement to say, no, that's not what happened. But they still went after Hopewell Fadzai because they... they put it on their social media, just like a lot of other people had done. And their charge is peddling falsehoods. But, but the video, the video was already, the video was, it was there, it was public. Okay. I guess that's that. Um, yeah. Didn't we cover the story as well? We did, didn't we? Delita, 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 visa, visa, delita, delita, delita. In the whole video, if he say, if he say, I'm not going to jail. I'm too pretty to go to jail. Delita, delita. <laughs> Moving it right along, we go on to two very popular Zim dancehall artists, the guys that have been, I think, for the past year or two, running the Zim dancehall scene as producers, uh, Fantan and Levels, who were arrested for staging a show on the 31st of January in Mbare against, obviously, what uh, we were told not to do. Uh, everybody was told uh, that no public gatherings, nothing of that nature was meant to be happening. And then they went on and staged a show. Now they were arrested uh, and then, you know, prosecuted and uh, ultimately convicted. And they were sentenced to a year in jail, but six months was taken off their sentence. Uh, and then so they are serving currently six months in jail as we speak. Um, look, the law is the law. Whether you agree with the law or you don't, the law is the law. That's that's what I think, right? So if the law was broken, okay, we get it. What what I'm saying though is like, let's be fair. Do you know what I'm saying? If if we're gonna, you know, let's let's also do it there. Because I understand there's a very prominent businessman that had a gathering as well on the 31st. Um I won't lie, bruh. I'm just upset I wasn't invited. I would have taken you with me. Like, we would have gone together. I'm just upset that I wasn't invited. So that's why I'm like, but why aren't they arresting the other guy? Because gatherings, right, is what they said. They shouldn't be. So there was a, you know, come on. let's If we're going to arrest in Bare, let's also cross the other side of Samora and do the same thing. If I was at that party, I would not be reporting on the story right now. That is how shallow I am. I am, yes. I would have been, if I was drinking champagne with them on the third, I would not be reporting the story. But because I wasn't there, I am calling for... <laughs> right, moving it right along to our last story. 
The government says, do not panic over ventilator shortages. Now, only a fraction of COVID-19 patients will be admitted into intensive care units and every health facility in Zimbabwe is able to isolate and manage a person seeking treatment for corona. This was confirmed by the COVID-19 National Coordinator Agnes Mahomva, uh, dispelling reports that public hospitals had run out of ventilators, beds and other equipment as corona virus cases soar. Uh, she said only 2 to 5% of COVID-19 patients would need access to ventilators and ICU facilities. Those who are critically ill, severe patients that need ICU, every single health facility in the district is able to isolate and manage uh, at the beginning and now and know how to refer and what to advise. Uh, so this is what she said to journalists. Um, in Harare on Wednesday. I don't know. Hey, I, I think I'm just going to continue steaming. I think I'm, I'm not willing to take that chance. I, I think I'm just going to continue steaming. I'm going to continue. Yeah, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'll continue steaming and um, drinking hot liquids and social distancing and masking up and... Yeah, no, no, I think I will. I, I am saying I don't trust that statement. I think I will just continue doing what I have to do. Because I saw this tweet from Ace Lumumba. AC, he, he tweeted this at some point. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to continue. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to get into the interview. Like we said, this gentleman is, is this is one for the books. This is definitely one for the books. We have got Professor Jonathan Moyo with us today. He is the former Minister of Information and Publicity, as well as the former Minister of Higher Education. And he's here, he's in exile. We don't know where exactly he is, but he is somewhere in in exile so um now i'm going to switch to zoom and that's where i'm going to talk to him so in 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 three in two in one let's go to zoom. hi hi so sorry sorry to cut you off there uh, i just wanted to put out this disclaimer that the views being expressed in this episode by jonathan moyo are the professors views and his views alone. Um, I just ask the questions and he answers them. In fact, I didn't even write these questions. Someone else wrote them. Um, hey, someone else wrote them. So I'm just really just doing my job. You know, that's that's all I'm doing because I know a lot of people. Are going to okay, welcome back. Now, like we said, today we have a very special guest. Uh, regardless of what you may think, uh, of his uh, politics and, and 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 the way he's conducted himself. One thing you can't deny is this is one of the most brilliant minds in Zimbabwean politics that we've ever had. Uh, today we have the former Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development. Uh, he was also Minister of Information and Publicity. We have Professor Jonathan Moyo, welcome to the takedown, sir, and, and happy belated birthday. Thank you very much uh, on both counts. Yes, yes. How, how did you celebrate your birthday? What did you do? Uh, well, you know, uh, in these uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, days, it's very difficult uh, to celebrate a birthday, if not impossible. I just remembered it and uh, uh, had... Um, uh, dinner, a special dinner that uh, was under very strict uh, uh, COVID-19 protocols. But thanks to the digital uh, world, uh, I celebrated it quite uh, in a big way uh, on Twitter. <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, I, I, before we get into uh, uh, Twitter, <laughs> And and your, that's that's your new home uh, Twitter. We want to talk about uh, you. You are in. We we know you are in exile. You've been in exile for a while now. Uh, how are you surviving? Like, what are you doing? Are you working? Uh, how how many diamonds did you run away with to be able to sustain yourself this long? 
Well, uh, when we called uh, for Mama to save us, it was very difficult to, to live with anything there. So <laughs> we just uh, went into exile with ourselves. Um, and, and, and we have to make do uh, with uh, whatever we are able to create uh, through our intellectual property. Uh, but of course, uh, you, you know that uh, for me, uh, being in, uh, in exile is not uh, a new experience. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. I have spent just about 50-50 uh, of my life uh, in Zimbabwe and in exile. So I'm a veteran uh, exile uh, uh, person. Right, right. I'm sure the, the offshore accounts and so on, uh, this is where they come in handy now. No, it's fine, it's fine, say it's fine. I don't know whether landlocked uh, countries have offshore, uh, offshore accounts. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Zimbabwe does not a, have an offshore. What, <laughs> what, what I have known, sir, is that Zimbabweans will always make a plan. They will make a plan to, didn't, wasn't there once a, a funding for um, snow cleaning or something like that, that once came through to Zim and we didn't have snow. So I, I don't put anything past us. Yeah, I really, I really don't. Now, before we get into the serious questions, me, this one is my personal one. Have you forgiven yourself for giving us Pax Afro and being responsible for Rambai Makashinga and Hondo Eminda? Because I haven't forgiven you. Aataka Tambura. Aywa, those native who pay you, you happen to mention two of uh, my most cherished uh, uh, projects, if you want to call them that. Uh, uh -huh. Pax Afro was, uh, in my view, uh, music at its best, and it showcased some of Zimbabwe's best talent. And um, it will uh, withstand the test of time in terms of people who know anything to write home about uh, as far as music is concerned. You'd pick the double album, Pax Afro album right now, and listen to it. Uh, you will not think that uh, those are Zimbabwean musicians, uh, both in terms of uh, lyric, uh, uh, the lyric content, content. Uh, and the musicianship, the execution. And as a matter of fact, you will not find many, if any, uh, uh, music producer of the standard and quality of Isaac Chirwa. Uh, uh, Isaac Chira's misfortune is that he's Zimbabwean. If he was South mm -hmm. African, American, British, Australian, or Canadian, he will be one of the richest musicians on earth. You have an amazing depth of talent and experience in Isaac Chirwa. One of the things I hope will happen in my lifetime, and the clock is really uh, kicking, uh, no, no, you've got time, Z don't worry. I, I, I hope that um, Zimbabweans will learn to be nuanced, to separate things, and learn to appreciate certain things for their inherent value, for the good in them, not because of their association, especially political association, but sometimes it's also tribal association. Um, mm. but for what they are in and of themselves. I want to repeat to you, don't confuse Pax Afro with uh, Wondo Yominda. It, it had absolutely nothing to do with that. Uh, your question did touch on Wondo Yominda and we can talk about that. Pax Afro was about proving that local content in Zimbabwe, music content in this case, is possible and it can be executed at the highest level, as good as any level where you find human beings who are making and enjoying music. We did that to promote True. local content. We did not do that as any political project. Um, no, no, no. no. Or, it wasn't a, a political project. Yeah. So from a music yes, no, no, it wasn't. I'm telling you, unfortunately, we are speaking yeah. in the morning. This is not at night. 
we are still awake. We just uh, right. uh, came from sleeping. So no one is asleep here. I want to tell You're you, right. Park, Park Safros, yes. double CD, uh, Back to Black album is one of the best music projects I, ever to come from Zimbabwe. And, and, and I, yeah. you, you, my dear friend, Dube, fortunately, yes. you are one human being yeah. out of 15 million Zimbabweans. <laughs> and uh, you are entitled to your choice. We respect your choice. But from where I sit over the mm. last 10 years, I happen to know that many decent cultural conscious Zimbabweans love Pax Afro. We are inundated with the request for that double CD album. So I'm happy to really? read, but I'm not stupid not to know that people have different uh, music uh, tests uh, and so mm -hmm. forth. And uh, I would be the last person to say every Zimbabwean loves Pax Afro. No, of course not. I, okay, let's, let, we'll run a survey. We'll, run a, we'll figure it out after the interview, how we run a survey, 100 people to tell us if Pax Afro. If, cool. if I win, cool. you invite me to where you are and we'll celebrate I will invite you together. to the dungeon. I am in the dungeon. Uh, yeah. Yes, right, right. <laughs> now, uh, moving it along, how, how, what are your thoughts on the new MTCT president, Douglas Monzora? In what sense is he new? I thought the guy has been around all along. Yes, him taking the reins as president now. Well, as far as I'm concerned, uh, first of all, I, I respect freedom of association. People are free mm -hmm. to associate uh, with whoever they want in whatever way they want. But uh, uh, MDCT uh, is uh, not uh, a political player in Zimbabwe, as far as I'm concerned. It is a, a creation of the uh, regime, Nangagwa's regime. Um, the MDCT that I knew uh, and which, uh, although I disagreed with, but was a major political player in the country, was the Morgan Tsangirai led MDCT. And it was T because of his name, Tsangirai. I don't understand or see how someone called uh, uh, Douglas Monzora, whose last name is M, can lead a party that is called MDC Twangirai. He can do whatever he wants, but he will never be Twangirai. Okay, so which, which of the MDCs do you acknowledge as a player? Well, uh, I, I am a political uh, scientist, uh, or better put, I am a student of politics. Uh, yes, I have been a political practitioner, but first and foremost, I sat behind the desk to study politics. And uh, if uh, I uh, were to put my uh, head, my student one, uh, I would say that you can only judge which political formation or movement uh, is significant or has impact by the extent to which it resonates with the hearts and minds of ordinary people, not mm. in, in terms of how it is treated by this, the ruling elite, but how the ordinary person in the street or village reacts to it. And the only way you can judge that is through a participatory process such as an election. And the only MDC that has proven itself to be worth of its place in the political arena is the one that is led by Nelson Chamisa, who not only had the MPs who are now strangely being considered or called the MDCT MPs, those were um, M, uh, Nelson Chamisa's MPs, uh, sent there by the people, not sent there by a, a judgment of the court or by a recall. But more importantly, Nelson Chamisa is the first oppositional candidate to break the two million voter or vote barrier. In fact, right. although I know there are some people who contest this, the truth is he got some 2.6 million votes in the last uh, harmonized general election, 
one would have to be crazy not to take that kind of an individual as the one who is leading the most significant MDC formation purely by virtue of how the public in the form of the electorate has reacted to him. Monzora is a beneficiary of a disputed Supreme Court judgment. And he is leading a, an MDCT which has been enabled and uh, has been facilitated by Mnangagwa's regime. It has not been facilitated by the membership. It was somehow supposed to have been produced by 2014 MDCT structures in 2020. How, how can 2014 structures produce a result in 2020? Right, <clears throat> right. Okay, all right. No, I, 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 I see. I'll ask about uh, the, the the current president a bit uh, later on as we move on. There's one question that has plagued Zimbabweans for a very long time, uh, even up to now. Even though maybe people are starting to get uh, sink in to a certain reality, but the question is still there. Itai Zamara, what happened? Where is he? Well. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that uh, you and many others find it easier to ask me uh, and very difficult to ask Emerson Mnangagwa or uh, uh, General Chiwenga or Kembo Mohadi, who were the principal people responsible precisely for the affairs that uh, touch on this issue and who have made uh, statements before and who should be held accountable not only because of their role yesterday when uh, Itai Zamara disappeared. Remember that uh, the day he disappeared, Emerson Mnangago was the acting president, even though there was a robot in Gabi. Emerson Mnangago was acting president. He was also the leader okay. uh, uh, of government business in parliament, the, uh, the, uh, the leader of the house as it were. And he said a lot of things that did not make sense then and that do not make sense today in retrospect. And Chiwenga was the, uh, the commander of the ZDF, uh, the Zimbabwe Defense Forces. I think as long as Zimbabweans are afraid to ask the tough questions uh, to those in power and find it easy, to ask the questions, those who are out of power, we will never solve these very serious problems. Now, where is he? I wish I knew. I don't know where he is. Uh, the record will show that uh, when he disappeared uh, uh, in 2015, um, I was uh, a minister of information. And uh, in May 2015, in an interview with uh, Hard Talk, I made remarks about him uh, or, or, or his whereabouts, which were most unfortunate uh, and very regrettable. And I expressed my regret while I was still in government uh, in uh, uh, June of 2016 when I became aware that what I had said based on what Mohadi uh, had said in cabinet as minister uh, uh, then of uh, home affairs in, uh, and giving a security report to cabinet. He, and, and that report intended for us in the Ministry of Information to deal with the question which is the purpose of those, those reports. Uh, he was unequivocal that he thought, not that he thought, that the security system he was representing, both in terms of uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs and therefore the Zimbabwe Republic Police, which fell under his ministry, but also the joke, uh, which he spoke for joke being the Joint uh, Operations Command that brings all security organs in Zimbabwe. That uh, they, uh, they are reported to us as in cabinet was that uh, um, it had disappeared as an internal job to put pressure on the government. 
uh, and mm -hmm. we had to find a way of presenting that uh, 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 view. But still, when we were in government, it became obvious that in fact he, he had been abducted, and he had been abducted by the security guards. And the question is, was it a joke abduction or a CIO abduction? What you and the Zimbabweans must know is that there is no crime, serious crime involving a disappearance or murder or abduction that is not resolved in Zimbabwe. And unless it is done, uh, the, namely the disappearance or abduction or murder has been done by the security forces. The only crimes of that nature that have never been resolved or solved in Zimbabwe have been done by the state. And we can count them right from the days of Guguraundi through the um, uh, Majonga issue, through the Rashiwe Guja, Kane Kala, uh, uh, Justina Mkoka, um, uh, all these people up to now, what happened to young uh, uh, Tawanda Mchehiwa, those crimes that are not resolved of that nature, without exception, are perpetrated by the state security okay. organs, so either okay. one of them or all of them in a joint operation. And there is a common pattern about them, the way how right. the abductees how it, uh, how it goes about. But you know what? I, I, I want to end this issue by, again, uh, highlighting what I said from the beginning. These are not matters to play political games about. These are matters that touch on the lives of individuals who are affected and the families around them. My own father was abducted, tortured, and murdered uh, when the Gugraundi 5th uh, Brigade uh, was first deployed. Its very first actions in January of 1983 the very first actions of Gugraundi uh, were to abduct, torture, and murder people in Cholocho. Its first area of operation was in Cholocho. That pattern has continued to this day. And the people right. on the ground, the field operatives, the enforcers who were behind that, uh, uh, or those atrocities, are the ones who are now in charge of the political system. And, and, and the Zimbabweans need to treat these issues with the seriousness they deserve. Recently, they caused the abduction and torture of Tawanda Mchehiwa. I, with others, have through uh, involvement and because people now in the system have divided loyalties and they share information with, uh, rather information with people they, they think would uh, share that information with the wider public. We got the names of the people who abducted Tawanda, tortured Tawanda, and published them. And the people want to ask me, where is Tendai, uh, rather Itai Damara? Don't want to do anything about those names. The names are there in the public, and the state can't deny that these are the people. They are all, they are about, uh, uh, 15 names, some who mm -hmm. participated only in the abduction and others, five, who, uh, who participated in the torture. You put them well, there uh, in public uh, uh, and the people do nothing. They don't demand. I, I'm, sure you can, I, I'm sure you can understand, as you've just said, one, you are in exile yourself, and two, you have said... Well, that, I'm not uh, in exile because of any name that was released. I'm in exile because uh, 25 uh, ha highly heavily uh, uh, armed uh, uh, soldiers with AK-47, with grenade, came to my house and to Comrade Gasukwere's house to attack not only me, but my, and my family. There are not many stories where there is yes, a, so, a so coup then, and the yes. army comes to your house. When they went to Joshua Nkomo's house, uh, uh, remember, in the 80s, what did he do? He fled the country, he went into exile. He fled, yes. So you can understand why yeah, so it's we, we should not mix the issues, you know. To, 
No, it's not mixing the issues. I'm trying to highlight to why it's difficult for Zimbabweans in Zimbabwe to ask those questions. If no, but you know, I, I, people I, I, can I, run no, away. Dube, Dube, that's an yes. easy way out. Uh, the mm. reason we have human rights organizations, NGOs, the reason why we have political parties is so that they can and should must do things which are difficult for individuals to do. That's why we have organizations. Organizations are persons also, but they are bigger right. persons. Right. But than you, you are saying, and they should you are exist saying as well, sir. With. You are saying as well, sir, though, that the, the pattern it has been there since then, and these organizations have also been there since then, and nothing has been no, done no, since. No, no, they, so, they have not been there since then. One of the organizations which was there since, uh, then is ZAPU. It's no longer there. There are new organizations now, mm -hmm. and these new organizations in the context of the new regional geopolitics, the new international politics have a duty. They have uh, sister organizations. They relate to Amnesty Internationals of this world, Human, Ri uh, Human Rights Watch of this world, which are international are not based in Zimbabwe, but which can act outside. You cannot have the names of people who have been involved in an atrocity and you do nothing about that. Uh, you don't have to address the question only in Zimbabwe. There are other countries, including South Africa, whose laws allow for these matters to be brought uh, in their jurisdictions with consequences for the regime or the officials of the regime who are named in association or who are implicated in these things. So it's not like I'm talking about something which is just theoretical. I'm talking about something that is serious. And I'm saying, if you are going to ask, where is Ken Kala? What happened to Ken, uh, Ken Kala? What happened to Itai Zamara? It should be not that you are asking for the edification of your ear so that you just mm -hmm. get something told and your ear feels good that somebody has told you something. It should be because mm -hmm. there is a commitment to doing something to hold those who are uh, responsible to account. And if because of the nature of uh, the uh, regime, the autocratic situation in the country, people can't bring these things before the courts. Uh, they can do so in other juristic, uh, jurisdictions with serious consequences. Okay, all right. No, we'll, 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 we'll come back to that one. We'll uh, still touch on a couple of points that, I see you're wearing a hat like me. What size hat do you wear? Musoro <laughs> Bangu. <laughs> Do you hear the so jokes you, that you, come? You, you are wearing yours as a, fa a fashion statement. Mine, <laughs> I'm hiding something. <laughs> I, I didn't say me. I was asking genuinely because Mina, I like hats, and, and that's, that's why I was. You took it there. You. That's where you. <laughs> that's where you went. Um, moving it along, when you were Minister of Higher and Tertiary education, you tweeted something that got you into trouble. Uh, part of your tweet read, and I quote, chronic use of uh, antibiotics and ARVs induces vomiting and diarrhea. Why? why? You got in trouble with uh, people living with HIV or are affected by the disease. Why, why did you? No, well, um, um, uh, to the extent I did that, uh, I apologize then, uh, I apologize now. I didn't have them in mind. I did not uh, mean to target them, but I was trying to present a professional, a competing professional explanation to the situation that uh, one individual who was making all sorts of strange allegations uh, uh, or uh, uh, was saying, we were, he was saying all sorts of things uh, that didn't make sense uh, and which required competing technical explanations. So this, that was one of the technical explanations to say, no, uh, enough that about this uh, ice cream, poison, and all this stuff. <laughs> I, I I I was asking about the tweet. I didn't go into detail. I'm I'm still I'm still well, in you, the country. You wanted <laughs> me to go in the detail. Remember that the devil <laughs> the devil is always hiding in the detail. 
if you want to, if you ask a, a question, a pregnant question like you did, it uh, asking for a, a detail to explain, then you will find the devil hiding there. The devil in there. Now I get you. You, I mean, it's 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 clear. It's been obvious from then up to now that you don't agree with ED. Uh, the current sitting president, uh, but as as you know, as opposition politics or whatever, that sometimes you do uh, give a nod where someone does something correct. Are there five things that you can point out that the current president is doing right? No, they are not. Remember, if you want a number, numbering starts from zero. Hmm. Zero is a number. And are there five things? No, there are no five things. There are zero things. Okay. <laughs> he, he doesn't even care about it because you know, uh, uh, you know, you know these things. You know, uh, if you come to power via the bullet, you will not worry about the ballot. Mm. So no. you won't do anything to increase your ballot because your power is based on the bullet. I mean, we can say whatever we want. I recognize, and I, I've tried to do so, especially recently, uh, si since this year. I mean, one of my New Year resolutions was to call him president. And to call him president, <laughs> not because I believe he's a legitimate president. I am a student of politics. I started uh, uh, very closely the 2018 elections, uh, and I know uh, with all due respect to his supporters, uh, uh, I, and I respect his supporters, I have no issue with them, but I have disagreements uh, with the basis of their support and so forth. But with all respect, I can say without any fear of being contradicted by any scientific process that he stole the election and he stole the election using the coup I mean, you can't go anywhere in the world where you have a coup in November and an election in July, and you think the July election will be free and fair. It was actually too free to be fair. Uh, it could not be fair because the people who use guns to get into power will not in seven months allow bullets to remove them from power. Uh, I was actually surprised that uh, there was a serious expectation that those elections would in fact be genuine and legitimate elections. So the problem with people who come into power using force is that they don't do anything to please the voter because they know that they are not in power because of the voter. Uh, they are in power because of the gun. Mm. Uh, and and, and, and they, they sleep soundly as long as they have the guns. And they only worry about the next guy who might use the gun against them. That's what they worry about. And that is why if you look carefully into politics in Zimbabwe over, over the last three years, it's been an internal fight among and between people who have guns. Hmm. Okay, so given uh, the former president, uh, the late, uh, Robert Gabriel Mugabe did admit that there's an election that was uh, lost to MDC, if you remember. Which isn't that which uh, election? The, 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 isn't that the 2000? 2000? No, I think you are talking about the 2008 election. Was it 2008? I'm getting, I'm getting my. Yeah, the one where in the the one where in a. A, a, either a moment of revelation or a slip of the tongue, he, he, he said Morgan Swangirai got 73 percent. Yes, 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 yes. Now yes. that's the 2008 election. That's 2000. Okay, that's thank you for the correction there. I, I, I got my, my facts mixed up there. Uh, that then we did not see the change that was meant to come with uh, such a high percentage in, in votes won. Isn't that the same thing? No, it's not. It's I not, mean, obviously, well, one way. I don't way. know. The same, th the same thing as what thing? Because the word same, you know, similar facts 
that's a very serious word now you are comparing things the same as what thing in terms of uh, you are saying someone who gets the the, the vote uh, find they got it through a, a coup right they had to go an extra mile to to get the desired uh, outcome that they wanted but when it's clear that the people want to go one way and you know you steer the ship another way you are part of the government at that point sorry what what did you say about the government when when you went no you know what what i'm saying the, you, one were, of the things you were that Kobe, ah. uh, you guys i don't know yes. why you think this you want to place me in government uh, all these years i was an opposition politician in 2008 i was an independent member of uh, uh, parliament uh, for cholocho north i was fighting uh, the government uh, i was not in government i was not in zanu pf i was not uh, a, right. a minister but i know just like you were asking the other question it suits your purpose to put me in government whether i was in it or not you say ah wanga uri po ndimi ndimi makaita aiwa angangi ngeko phakathi wabo mina akungicolele mhlobo wabo hayi niyali lapho yenya licolele nyazwisisa but you la rejoin up here so uma lali bona ukuthi indaba yakho nayi manga kuhle singobani what was the thing singobani Lira ya as, as, as an independent at last any opposition belong to 208 ah yeah look uh, look the situation of 2008 is, uh, is tragic uh, in the, in the sense that uh, uh, when it became clear to the uh, securocrats that uh, president mgabe had lost that election uh, they went for plan b they didn't have they didn't think as they went into the election that they would lose it plan c was in there plan d was in there and they took three or so months to announce the result while they were looking for a plan and when they mm. came back with a plan it was a military plan uh, mm. that coup we could all see it coming because they just disappeared uh, and uh, and locked the results uh, after uh, declaring the parliamentary results because those are, right. are declared at the constituencies for me and i recently wrote about this i was very surprised that the mdct which together with mdcm had won 110 seats uh, uh, out of 210 and therefore for the first time since independence had de defeated the zanu pf in parliament did not quickly consolidate and galvanize a, a reaction or response to the presidential election using its control of parliament because they they had won parliament and, and uh, no one hid that fact uh, and 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 that was a, a seriously significant fact and that should have been the basis for engaging zanu pf uh, and the international community and everybody including sadik and uh, president mbeki's uh, uh, mediation process mm. the fact that they actually started wanting to negotiate everything and in the final analysis and ended, ended up losing the control of parliament by forming a joint caucus with uh, Uh, zanu pf is something that to this day i don't understand and when i raise it they want to say oh but why didn't you guys do this why did you no we are talking about organization and organizations must take responsibility they, they must not run away from their responsibility by saying ah, but you where were you what were you doing hey you were supporting zanu pf because let's be clear about one thing as far as some of us are concerned especially me me i genuinely believe in the foundational values of zanu pf okay i believe genuinely and i was one of those in fact i'm i'm the one who drafted for chinamasa the inclusion of uh, 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 the, the the ideals 
we, we wanted actually to put values and ideals of the liberation struggle as part of the foundation, founding principles of our new constitution. Because I genuinely believe that we will not have Zimbabwe without that liberation struggle. I don't mm -hmm. see it as a struggle that was fought by some individuals, especially when you bring Zapu and Zanu, uh, Zipra and Zanla together. And in right. fact, you don't even have to do it yourself. You have to acknowledge the historical fact that when uh, the liberation movement negotiated uh, with the British and the Rhodesians, our independence, they went there as the patriotic front, an umbrella of the liberation movement. What mm -hmm. fueled that struggle and led to the formation uh, and existence of ZANU, ZAPU, uh, and so forth, is what makes us Zimbabweans. And I don't have to negotiate that with everyone. I believe in that. And, 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 and in Zimbabwe, we have not had a political opposition party since ZAPU. The only serious opposition party which believed in the liberation values and did so with serious credentials was ZAPU. And one of the reasons why some of us as intellectuals at the time complained and expressed concerns about ZAPU becoming part of ZANU is that Zimbabwe would have been a better society if ZANU and ZAPU had remained as the two contending centers of power because both of them had a very credible historical background that you could not question. And to the extent that the background summarizes the essence of the liberation movement and the foundation of ZANU or ZANU-PF, I, I, you know, unapologetically associate myself with that. But of okay. course, Zan, ZANU PF is like a car. Mm -hmm. you, 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 if you believe in driving and transport or transportation, you will value a car. Mm -hmm. But you will not confuse the car with transportation or driving. One okay. car is not equal to transport and driving. It's just one car. It is the proof that you can use it to move from point A to point B. So mm -hmm. transportation as the liberation struggle and that background and values and driving, I value to this day. But this one car, it can get old and become skorokoro. Zanu PF, right. the car is a skorokoro. With absolutely no use, it must be taken and dumped in the scrapyard because it's no longer good for the transportation and the movement. So I like the transportation, but I don't like the damn car. The, the car. All right. No, here you will come back to that as well. I made a note of that. Uh, just to lighten it, you being in exile, I'm sure there are things in Zim or about Zim that you miss. Uh, what do you ask people to bring you from Zim when they when they are coming to 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 see you where you are? Are you trying to find out whether any people come to visit me or what? Well, uh, <laughs> what are you? No, that, that 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 one is, is is genuinely asking what you miss because people that are out. But I have seen people transporting uh, Chimkuyu. Chimkuyu. Yes. The number one thing you miss. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. All right. No, we will we'll, we'll get you uh, some chimkuyu. We've got some Twitter questions here. Uh, as you would know, Twitter is your playground. And um, some people, where, where did the, 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 the interest in Twitter come from? Uh, it was a combination, but largely from my kids. Okay. Uh, but um, uh, I've uh, also said this. Ndudu uh, Zimatutu uh, was uh, quite instrumental in, in getting me on Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and Delta was very helpful. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, We've got a tweet here Bangleta. from Tariro. Eh? Bangleta. Uh, Tariro says, uh, what do you mean, uh, what did you mean when you said even God does not love people without mathematics when you were the Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education? 
Sorry, I didn't get, did not love people without what? Uh, what did you mean when you said God does not love people without mathematics when you were the Minister of Higher Tertiary Education? I think the person who's asking that question uh, is suffering from compound mischief. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Uh, yeah. God, by and large, created us with the capacity for speech as human beings. Right. Uh, in one form or another, uh, right. we, we, we communicate through speech. And right. the speech is in two forms words or numbers and that is all that's how we speak okay. mm. now so, why would anyone want to escape numbers when god created them with that capacity <laughs> maybe he enhanced the speech side <laughs> maybe he put more emphasis on the speech side no i said speech than... has two components words mm. And numbers. Words and numbers, yes. So uh, there is no speech with words only. On you say libanga, guys, batatu, and this and that. It is a, <laughs> <laughs> it is it is it is a, a package. <laughs> ah, all right, no, you win. That one you win. I'll give you that one. I can't I can't rebuttal that one. Yeah.